Hey guys! So, <clears throat> today we are going to talk about JavaScript. And an issue I had the other day, which makes me... Well, I'll share some thoughts on the, uh, on the topic. So let's get into it. Now, I will make a statement. And the statement I will make is that JavaScript is the sort of language that rots and decays faster than any other programming language. What do I mean by that? I mean that the, at the rate that JavaScript decays and the rate that you accumulate technical depth and complexity in a JavaScript application is higher than in any other programming language. That's what I will argue. And I will argue that because I have to, they, to this day still not worked in a single JavaScript application or a single seen a single code base with the exception of really, really big open source projects such as React, for example, where, the, where virtually the maintenance is immense. There are hardened, seasoned veterans exclusively working on that code base. But for every single company I've ever worked for, every single private project, I can see how quickly the, the code base in a, JavaScript basically decays. It, is, it's, it, it happens so rapidly. And I think I know why. I will make the argument that there's two factors that make this a truth. And I think that we should, we should talk about both. The first reason I believe that JavaScript decays so quickly is because there is really no one out there who knows how to maintain a JavaScript project over time. Let me explain why. JavaScript is a loosely typed language. It is the sort of language where you have no established you don't really have any type of established patterns. You don't have any conventions. There's really not a culture of quality in JavaScript. It has, since day one, been treated as this hacker type of language that you can pick up in, in a day and put something together and then it works and then you kind of just go with it. And that, I think, is causing the next issue. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. Because the, it's so easy to get started with JavaScript and it's so easy to get something up and working and there's so many th possibilities, you, and you, you don't really cultivate this more conservative, high quality mindset when you're writing the code. Because I see it all the time. I see people hack things together because they can and they just kind of go for the quick fixes and they add a bunch of ugliness to the code because they can. And because they can do it, the code base rots quicker. Because just because you can do something doesn't mean that it's a good idea. That's actually one of the arguments I have for frameworks such as React. I believe that having a framework like that helps a lot. It's not perfect, you can mess that up as well, but it helps a lot with keeping, like, to be able to consistently produce decent results in a JavaScript application. You get a lot of help. And that's actually one of the reasons I think that JavaScript actually has this issue with people not being able to consistently maintain the, the code base. They're not able to consistently produce quality software. Simply put, JavaScript has, it's such a raw language and it requires so much of you as a developer. You have to be a really good developer in order to be able to write really good high quality JavaScript. I think that it's the same sort of issue that you see in C++ or C. These languages are the sort of languages where if you are a beginner, you are going to mess that code up. It's going to be really tricky for you because there are all these things about these languages that makes it very difficult for you. They're, they're very unforgiving in their own way. But once you're a master, 
if you are a C++ master and you know all the tricks, you have a skill set that allows you to, especially in C++, you basically become one of the most powerful developers that you could possibly be. And I argue the same thing is true for JavaScript. I argue that the same type of rule apply. If you don't, if you're not a master of JavaScript, you will get it wrong and you will make that code decay very, very quickly. If you are a master of JavaScript, you don't really see the problem that everybody else is having because you all already know all these tiny tricks to keep things clean and good and make, that, make it scale over time. But it takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice to get to that point. And now I'll tell you why I think that the unforgiving nature and how, to, how, how, much, how much of an issue this thing that I'm saying is that JavaScript doesn't help you. JavaScript depends on you and your skill. It's, think of it as flying a plane. It used to be the case that pilots worked in planes that were extremely unforgiving, very unforgiving. It used to be the case that the, sk the, the skill or how well a flight was, uh, how, uh, how well a flight plane plan worked for a pilot was only due to his or her skill flying the airplane. Today, you have computers and assistants and other kinds of support th systems in place in order to take away a lot of that load from the, from the pilot themselves. That's exactly how I think about JavaScript. Other languages have things about them that make it makes it easier and more it makes it easier to consistently produce good software. JavaScript is not that type of language. It is much rawer than that. So that brings us to point number two. And this is something that my colleague did, said the other day. He is a back-end developer, or rather that's how he refers to himself, that's the way he thinks. I was looking through a code review and I was noticing that he was doing something that I thought was kind of odd. And I said, this is semantically incorrect. This is going to create a lot of confusion in our JavaScript code base. And so we started talking about it and finally he said this magical sentence. Well, I'm going to be honest, I don't really think so much about this because you know, I'm a, job, I'm a back-end developer, so I just try to be a, pr a pragmatist when it comes to JavaScript, and I just try to make it work, and if it works, I don't really care so much. That, that thing there, that's the second problem. You don't respect the code base. You are a back-end developer. Why, and I asked him, why does this matter? It's still code. Why are you writing good software in one language and crappy software in the other? And he said, well, yeah, I, I don't really know. That mindset, that mindset is the problem. The mindset, and I think this is, as I said, I think this is a culture thing. It works on two levels. I think the first and foremost reason why this is happening is because it is the mindset of the community. The mindset of JavaScript, as I said, it is so, it, it has, it's so raw and so many people are doing it wrong, quote unquote, that it's just a part of the culture, that you don't respect it as much as you would respect something like Java, for example. Because this guy is a Java developer. His jo he is religiously good or, or zealously good, zealous when it comes to semantics, correctness, naming convention, types, all kinds of things when he's working in Java, but not in JavaScript. Never in JavaScript, because he doesn't want to deal with the language. And that's the second thing that I think, apart from the mindset being different when you work in JavaScript, the second thing is that because JavaScript is so unforgiving and so raw, most backend developers, at least that I find, they don't like the language. They simply don't emotionally like working in the language. So because, and because they don't like the language, they just want to get the thing working and then they don't care anymore. That short-sighted software development strategy 
is the reason why the code base decays so quickly. And I think that's why I respect people who are like Paul Lewis or Jake Archibald and these JavaScript advocates, especially at Google, for example, because I know how hard it is to be a really good JavaScript developer. It is really tricky to make JavaScript a scalable, good language. And you kind of have to respect somebody who takes the time to master something like JavaScript. My co an old colleague of mine used to say that JavaScript is a shitstorm. And yes, it is. But I would rather be a master of the shitstorm than basically break and create problems for every single project I touch. That's at least the way I think about it. So I, I have a great deal of respect for people who really go into and really try to become good at JavaScript because I know how tricky it is, it is to get JavaScript right. Have a great day.